Hello YouTube viewers, uh, welcome back and today we're going to tackle a bunch of, of cuts, what, uh, what they call booleans, in an attempt to make the rear end of the, of the back end of the engineering section, which I'm talking about, I'm talking about here, this fantail cut and some other associated uh, uh, geometries in that area. I wanted to give you an idea of, the, of what it looks like. So we've pretty much taken care of the front. Uh, we're going to, as a matter of fact, when we start this, one of the first things we're going to do is we're going to make these arms meet the cowls, and then we'll move immediately back here. So let's take a look at what the back of the enge engineering section looks like. So this cone-shaped uh, engineering hull has this scalloped out section here, but it continues past the back edge of the Enterprise. As a matter of fact, this is not a clean cut either. This cut from left to right has this protrusion here, which is perfectly in line with this scalloped out uh, section. And then this flat section here and here comes up starts to go back out towards the back and then is almost flat again here for this cut. And then there's this inset section for the shuttle bay. Uh, you can see the scalloped out section here and the fact that this is completely contiguous out here to the end of this rounded edge. Here's another angle on it from the side that we never actually saw filmed. As a matter of fact, remember, if you ever want to convince yourself uh, that they only ever flipped uh, the images when they showed the port side of the ship. Look up here on the saucer. You'll never see this arrangement of, uh, of windows uh, when you see this side of the ship. It'll always be on the other side. And the big giveaway is a great big yellow uh, banner up here. Um, this yellow banner right there between the windows. So you'll only ever see that whenever whenever you see the other side of the ship and that's because they would film it and show it backwards uh, anyway here's that scalloped out section again a slightly different angle again from the port side of the ship just to give you an idea of what it looked like if you ever came close to seeing it it was in a shot like this so this is from the immunity syndrome you can actually see this rounded out section where this set of doors, uh, hangar doors is that uh, keeps the air inside for the shuttlecraft. And then there's lights on the edge here. And, uh, and you can barely see the, the red uh, rectangle uh, here for signage underneath in this scalloped out section, but it was almost always in shadow. This is a much clearer shot of what that looks like. Here's what some of the signage looks like. Here's the flashing light that was on the side. And this window was quite often lit. But here's that rounded section, and this is clearer than ever. You can see that this is all contiguous. A uh, shot from a little further away, seeing the whole thing. A shot from directly in back. You never saw a shot like this during the run of the series. But you can see that this is all smooth under here and contiguous. And then you can see that this is kind of a flat section. And then this rounds out here in the back. We're going to, now this is a real nice shot, although this is scanned, I believe, from the Star Trek uh, poster magazine. And, and of course, the picture was printed right where they, right where they uh, folded, the, uh, folded the magazine in order to sell it. So it's not quite so clear. We'll come across a much clearer shot here from Chris Trice about the same area. It's a little overlit here, so it's hard to see uh, where this flat end is. Uh, uh, flat section ends and this rounded section begins. Closer up, again, the flash was just a little too bright. Here you can see it dead on. I've shown you this before. The set of shuttle bay doors is not quite perfectly circular, but it's almost like a sphere or a ball uh, sitting on top of this uh, rounded out section above the scalloped end and with a flat, uh, uh, flat area back here. <clears throat> that matches the shape of the hull. Another three-quarter angle, so you can see that area a little better. Here it is from the port side. You can see this shape far better now. Uh, this flat section, which continues out and goes around. Uh, this is not really straight. 
but is curved and goes up, and then this back end is actually straight. A little closer to the back of the model. A shot from on top, so you can really see this. This is beautiful. And this is when it was undergoing restoration, the very first time it was brought to the Smithsonian. Um, the, this shot is actually, I think, flipped, but you can definitely see this uh, curve here. This is what that section looks like without the shuttle bay doors. Now, I wanted to show you this, because this is what it, as close as you're going to get to a side-on view. Now, it's upside down. We could probably rotate this, but it's not necessary. You can actually see the curve of this hull here. Here it is from on top. And this is a shot by, I believe, Gary Kerr. Um, you can actually see the geometry beautifully here. This is uh, after the current Smithsonian, the most recent, uh, 2018, the most recent Smithsonian restoration, which Gary was a part of. And he took a lot of spectacular pictures. As a matter of fact, I'm going to show you something even better. Here's one of Gary's photos. And he's got a whole bunch of people here, uh, like railroad model uh, couples and, and people standing there uh, for a scale. So you can actually get an idea of how large the section is. But you can beautifully see all the, uh, all the structural detail uh, of this model. A shot... Uh, straight down on that dome in the back. There's actually like three lights here. One, two, three. This dome, when lit, should look greenish. And I think this is my last shot. The This is the Enterprise model, the 11-foot model, as it was being filmed during production. You can see that they had these this blue background here. They call it a, a blue screen effect. But this was not lit. What they did was it was... It was just a large area painted blue, uh, and um, or, or they had blue material, but I think it was just painted a, a particular blue. It's called the photo, non, non-reproducible photo blue, I believe. In any case, you can actually see one of the technicians sitting down here. So no doubt he was turning the model during the shot. So probably started off like this, and he's pulling on this board here, acting like a lever, turning the ship as it's filmed. And uh, uh, they would do that. So the model would move a little bit, but not real fast. And uh, uh, as you can see, probably this one is first here on the right. And this one is later on in the sequence. So the camera is starting further away and getting closer as the model is turning. But this model has lights uh, and spinning warp engines, and there are no spikes uh, at the uh, front of the warp engines so this is a uh, this is the production model of the enterprise at least first season all right so uh let's fire up blender and let's show what i'm doing here okay so hopefully you are Saving at the end of every one of our tutorials. Remember, uh, Control S or File S to save. File save. Um, and let's go to Z to make this uh, transparent. I'm going to left shift and middle mouse to move over here. And I want to see this section here. All right. So we've, well, actually, let's, I promised we would do this first. Let's consolidate some of these uh, some of these areas. This first lower layer is where we've got all of our cameras and lights, and that's fine. I've put a bunch of uh, things here for keepsakes while we were uh, while we were trying to uh, model. So I'm going to highlight one of these. Actually, yeah, I'm going to hit B. I'm going to select all of the items that are here. I'm going to hit Move, M, and then I'm going to pick uh, an area off to the right. We can always get rid of those later. But now, uh, a signal, a hint that we are clear is there's no there's no dot in here. So there's no more, nothing left in this layer. Uh, up in the first layer, we've got a few things. Our engineering section, or at least the front of it, is here in the second layer. 
and the rest of the engineering hull is in the third. And actually, you know what? That's pretty much right where we want to keep it for now. But I'm going to go back to the second layer just for the moment. B, I'm going to grab all of this. M, to move it to the first layer. Now there's nothing in the second layer. There's only this in the third. One, and you know what? For right now, B. Let's grab all of this. I'm going to move all of this to the first layer. We've got the whole ship, the entire model, in this one layer, A. All right, so now the parts that I'm interested in are the fronts of these three arms and this cowl. Okay. So I want this. I'm going to move this to the second layer. I'm going to move this. Actually, you know what? I'm only going to move this to the second layer. Move second layer. All right, so let's go to the second layer. Cool. Cool. Actually, I'm going to move, just just so we can keep an eye on it, move this to the second layer. And we don't even need that. Move this to the second layer. All right. There we go. Second layer. All right, so we've got all the major components except for the two arms on the sides. We'll probably just reproduce them once we get this in the correct orientation. All right, so hit one to see this from the side. Center up on this. Uh, eventually what we're going to do is we're going to smooth this out and, and apply an edge split Z so that we can see this all transparently. I've right mouse clicked on this arm. Tab to enter edit mode. A to deselect everything. And then B, left mouse click and draw a line over the top set of verts. Now, I'm going to go to Z. We know we have everything selected that we want. I'm going to G for grab, Z to restrict it in the up and down, right? Uh, to go only up and down. I'm going to rotate around. We can even look in. Eh, it's going to make a slight intrusion. We can correct that if we have to. All right. So if I go to 1 and deselect everything, uh, I'm going to tab. I'm going to go over here to add modifiers. I'm going to, uh, oh, wait a minute. First, I want to make it smooth shading. So Z, we've got smooth shading, right? I'm going to go over here to uh, add modifier. I'm going to edge split and apply. And I'm going to tab out AA. So I've selected all the verts because I don't trust this thing. I'm going to remove doubles, and suddenly there are a bunch of doubles to remove. I'm going to go to Mesh, Normals, Recalculate the Outside, and Tab. All right, so doesn't look too bad. All right, let's go to... Whoops, I just want three. All right, so here we are on the front. Not bad. Uh, it's sitting exactly where we want. Okay. But now, oh, let's see here. Now that we've got that, we've still got that section selected. Shift, Control, Alt, C, and Origin to Geometry. That'll put it right in the middle. All right, so that's nice. That'll be right in the middle of that piece. Now, I also want uh, our 3D cursor, which I just I left-clicked and moved it. I don't want that. I do want it in the center. So I'm going to grab this rounded piece. Well, I'll tell you what, better yet, let's grab this. Yeah. All right, we've grabbed this larger section that the arm is actually going to sit on. I'm going to, well, just to be on the safe side, tell you what, let's tab into it and let's select, say, if I pick a if I pick faces, let's pick this face and then shift, right mouse click this face. All right. So we've got opposing faces. Shift A. I'm sorry. Shift S. I do apologize. Cursor to select it. That'll place the cursor right in between the two. <clears throat> in theory, that should be right in the center. All right. 
A to deselect everything. I'm going to go to vertex mode. All right, so hopefully that's right in the center. I'm going to tab out. I'm going to grab the arm that we want. Shift D to duplicate. I want to rotate this. Oh, nope, actually. I want to change my rotation, make sure that I'm rotating off of that 3D cursor. Now I want to rotate 90 degrees. That looks perfect. We're going to shift D again, rotate 180. And in theory, we have all the arms exactly where we want them to be. All right, now I'm going to go back to the first layer. I'm going to grab this one arm and this arm. I'm going to move them, whoops, move them to another layer. I'm going to go back here. Z, B, grab everything, move, one, and let's go to the first top layer. A to deselect, Z, and all right. Now, here's something what we're doing. I'm going to grab this tab. Is my edge split not working anymore? Yep. So grab an edge split, apply. I oh, can't do that until we get out. Tab. All right, cool. I'm going to do the same here. Edge split, apply. Even though we'll never render from this side, or we might, who knows? Edge split, apply. Okay. A to deselect everything. And let's take a look. All right, not too bad. A little difference here. Luckily, we didn't throw our arms away. Hmm. Bottom one lines up perfectly, but I must not, that, that cursor in the center must not be perfect. So, you know what? I'm just going to grab both of these arms. I'm going to delete them. I'm going to go over here. I'm going to go grab our arms, right mouse click, shift, right mouse click, move these back to one, and let's go to layer one. All right. So, three. Actually, why, why, why be silly? So let's move those to the second layer, and we're going to, we're going to move all these pieces this, this, this. Move to the second layer again. Let's go to the second layer. Three. A to deselect. Grab one of these. Z. Tab. Deselect everything. And then B. And just grab the inner vertices. Z. We're going to grab Y. G, Y. And move this in until that line until those verts are inside here. Okay. So that's important. Tab. Now we're going to smooth and edge split and apply. Okay, cool. And what the heck. All right. So shift, control, alt, C, origin to geometry. And we're going to do the same thing over here. Z to make it transparent, tab to uh, enter edit mode, A to deselect everything, B you want to grab the inner vertices, Z grab Y and move this until it just all the leading vertices disappear inside the cowl here, A to deselect everything, tab, smooth shading, edge split, apply, Okay, great. Now, Z. I want to select all of this. B. Move to 1. Let's go to 1. A to deselect all. Z. And everything's lined up perfectly again. Nice. And these forward arms now look like they are a part of the cowl because they go just inside. And it looks good. Okay, cool. Now, 1, Z, 
And let's take care of that. Let's make that uh, cursor perfect again. Shift S cursor to center. So now the cursor is at zero, zero, zero. That's way up here by the forward hull, the way we're doing things, which is fine. <sighs> and now we're going to work on this end. So we're going to cut this flat up here. We're going to cut a curve into here. We're going to cut a curve into here and somehow keep this rounded area which doesn't quite go out to the sides. All right. I like a challenge. Let's go to one, layer one. Go to our side view by hitting one on our number, number pad. And we're going to start off with a couple of, actually, at least three cylinders and a cube. So... First cube, shift A, mesh, cube. Great, that'll be up here. Grab, bring this down. All right. So now if I grab it and bring it so it's just on the outside of that, that's great. Okay. Oh, hang on one second. Okay, we could even bring that down. A little bit in size, but I'd want to change this uh, 3D cursor to bounding box. Scale. I don't want to make it too small. <clears throat> okay, so we've got it. So it's right on the edge there. Of course, we don't really want it to lop this off. We could grab this and move it in the Z direction. But we really won't have to do too much. Besides, we're actually going to use a trick to add this on and make it as smooth, smoothly match the underside of this hull. But still, we need about one, two, three cylinders. So, uh, first cylinder. So let's deselect that. Shift A, mesh, and cylinder. All right, now this cylinder. We're going to want more than 32. I'm going to guess that 100 will be fine. I'm going to grab this, move it here. I'm going to scale this down. All right. Well, it's almost perfectly placed. Look at that. I, I wanted the center of this pretty much right on this edge here. So I'm going to grab that. I want it kind of in the center, up and down, <clears throat> almost a little lower than center of this area. And I want the center of this right on the edge here. And we're going to scale this. And here's the thing. We want to scale it so that the outside is even with the outside of this lip here. Now I'm going to scale the rest, scale Z. And I want the top to match the top of this cutout section, but I want the bottom to be larger or, or below this lip, at least as far as it goes out here. As a matter of fact, we're only going to retain half of this or so, but we'll deal with that when the time comes. A to deselect. Okay, so that's one of our cylinders. Shift A, cylinder. All right, now that's at 100. So let's increase this to 200. Now, unfortunately, with my graphics card and monitor, that means that it's too fine for this thing to display at that resolution. So you only see the top and the bottom. However, you can also see it from the top and bottom. So I'm going to go to 3, rotate 90, 1, grab, move this down here, and scale it down a little. Now, that makes it work for us. The interesting thing is I want to grab this new cylinder, this high poly cylinder, and 
Well, you know what? I'm going to move a couple of things. First, I'm going to move this. I'm going to move this to layer two for now. I'm going to move this cube to layer two. All right, that leaves us with our engineering hull and this new cylinder. And you'll notice if I tab into it and zoom in, there seems to be like a kind of a flat section here between these two vertices. That's exactly what I want. I want to know where that is because I want to take that I want to grab the cylinder and I want to put that flat section right here where this rounded section flattens out. Now, I, I realize that it comes down beyond that. Don't worry, we're going to address that. But what we really want to do is we want to make this match this curve. Um, as a matter of fact, I want to, I think I want to scale this down a little more. Grab this. Actually, what I should have done was grab Z, move it back to where we want. Okay, so grab Z. I'm going to move that up there. Okay, so this flat section here meets the flat section of this. Now, this center of the object is just below the hull here. That's pretty much what I believe I want because this curve comes down and it doesn't straighten out. It looks like this scalloped section was meant to continue as an oval. So now I'm going to remember our, our cylinder here is still selected. I want to go to uh, 7 to look at it from on top, Z to see it. I'm going Since I'm going to move this forward, I want to scale this out a little bit. So scale Y only. And now it's bigger than the whole width of the engineering section, so that's fine. Go back to 1, Z. Now I want to scale this in the X direction only. So I'm going to pull this out until, until the bottom meets here. Now, that's fine, but it's it's not right. It doesn't have this section here. So we're going to do exactly what we did for our engineering section. We're going to tab into this, A to deselect all the verts. And I think right around here is about the middle. So I'm going to B, grab this. Now it's actually two verts, one on each side of the cylinder. That's why it's you can get that if you do things transparent. Now, we're going to turn on our proportional editing again. Remember this one? And hopefully you've left it at um, smooth fall off. But if you didn't, you can come up here and you can grab smooth. Okay. So now what I want to do is I want to hit G for grab. And you get the circle of influence. I don't want my circle of influence to be that big. I want it to come down about to here. Now, I'm just going to move that couple of verts up so that it meets the hull. I'm actually going to bring it forward and down a little bit. About like that. Okay, eight, 8 to deselect. All right, so that curve is almost there. I'm going to grab this vert right here, B. It's actually two. That's a line. Okay, so I'm going to grab. I'm going to reduce the size. That's a scroll flywheel up. Reduce the size a little bit, and then I'm going to make this come and meet the hull. All right, and then A to deselect. Then I want to grab some here. It almost doesn't matter. These will not, not survive. Um, just grab a couple maybe here. All right, so G and grab. I'm going to move this backward and up. Well, you know what? I don't like that. So let's grab these here a little closer. All right, cool. Grab and move back a little. 
Okay, you know what? I think that's going to be good enough for our purposes. So we've got a match here. It doesn't matter about the bottom. The bottom's not going to survive this. But what I do want to do is to remember this. Now I'm going to turn off proportional editing. So disable. And we've got this flat section here. So what I want to do is I want to I want to grab these. All right, because that's going to serve as a marker for me. I'm going to hit B, left mouse click, come down, grab at the bottom, and move all the way to the back. So now I've got this rear half of the cylinder selected. We're going to grab X and move it. All right, A to deselect. So we've got this flat section extending out beyond and tab and A to deselect. Okay, great. So what we're going to wind up doing, it's probably obvious to you now, is we're going to delete this from the engineering hall. But I also want to delete this from that rounded, from that cylinder that's going to sit right here. And we want one more cylinder that's going to come up and make this scallop cutout. And then at the end, well, actually, it doesn't matter when we do it. We can cut this section here with our cube. So A to deselect, Shift A. I want one more cylinder. This one does not have to be 200. Let's make it 100 again. Three, rotate 90. One, grab. We're going to scale this down. Now, this is not real round at all. So we're going to scale X and then scale. and see if we can make some of this fit here. And no matter what we do, unless we do something fancy, it's not going to match that curve. So let's scale Z. I want to try and match that. So let's see here, tab, deselect all. I want to grab this in the middle, B. Select this lower half. We're going to grab Z and move it down. All right, A, A. Let's tab, grab this, move it a little closer here. How are we doing? Not bad. Let's see what happens if we scale Z. Can we make that match a little closer? No. All right. Okay. Um, I guess we'll do some of our fabulous proportional editing magic here. Tab. A to deselect. I'm going to grab somewhere in the middle here one set of verts, probably this set right here. So B. And select that. Again, that should be a line. And then turn our proportional editing back on. I didn't think we'd need it so soon. I'm going to grab. And yeah. There, my proportional editing sphere of influence comes down. I can't I can't use my mouse, but right where that cutout there kind of straightens out. So we're gonna Grab this and move it into place. Okay, that's good. And then I think I want to, oh, A to deselect. And I think I want to grab, let's see, B. I'm just going to pick this entire top section. G, Z. I'm going to leave the area of proportional influence the same. I'm just going to grab it and bring it down. That's not bad. A to deselect. B. Grab these two verts, right? Let's grab, and I'm going to bring this down some more. And try and make that match. Okay, that's not, not bad. A. B. Grab. And then A, 
B grab whoops grab okay A so it doesn't matter that this isn't a well it doesn't matter that this isn't a perfect sphere I don't I don't care about this out here what I care about is matching this line so I'm gonna matter of fact I'm gonna tab out I'm going to grab X I'm going to make this match down here. Tab. I guess I've goofed here. Let me grab. Whoops. Shift S. Cursor to center. Sorry. B. Select that set of verts. Grab. Increase my proportional editing. A. B. Grab. Okay, that looks like it pretty closely matches the edge tab. All right. So now, one cylinder is going to be this area. One cylinder is going to cut out the scalloped end. One cylinder is going to cut this. And then our cube is going to cut that. All right, so now I have heard it said that these things should all be done at once. Let's see, I'm over here, and this is selected, so I'm going to scale Y. We're going to make it a little larger. All right, cool. One. Now, curious how to do this. All right, I'm going to go to my second layer here. I'm going to move these two items back to layer one. Not that it really matters. I'm going to deselect them all, A. <sighs> and I'm going to make copies of some of the stuff. Um, just to be on the safe side, I want a copy of this. So Shift D. Gonna move a copy of that to layer two. This shift D. Whoops. Move that to layer two. And then my engineering hole just to be safe. Shift D. Move that to layer two. All right. Nice. Okay. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take our engineering hull. Add modifier. Boolean. We're gonna do difference. We're going to pick this selector and pick this big cylinder and apply. Okay. Uh, let's go here to this cylinder. We're going to add modifier, Boolean, difference. We're going to pick that same big cylinder apply. Okay, great. We're done with this big cylinder. So we're going to take this and we're going to move it to the lower lower level 2. All right. Now I don't want to cut this not at the moment, but I do want to cut this scalloped end out here and I don't need all this wavy stuff. So first thing we're going to do is going to take engineering hull Yep. Add modifier. Boolean. Difference. Selector. Cube. Apply. All right. We actually don't need the cube anymore. Move to the lower second layer for now. If we hit Z, we can see that it's actually shaping up here, but it's left big holes, so we're going to do a lot of manual fixing in the end here. So one, Z. All right, last thing to cut out is this weird end. So select the engineering hull. Add modifier, Boolean, difference, selector, and the cylinder. Apply, highlight the cylinder, move to lower level two. All of our stuff is there, 
except for this cylinder, which we want to be a part of the model. We're going to hit Z and take a look. All right, believe it or not, that's actually doing exactly what we want. All right, cool. What do we got here? Oh, I moved this to upper layer to move lower layer to. Okay, great. And then this copy we can get rid of because everything worked well. I'm going to move it over to here just in case. That leaves us with just the cylinder. And if I go here, do I? Yep, so this is actually an unmodified copy. I'm going to move this over here as well, get it out of the way. All right, so there's nothing in upper layer 2. As a matter of fact, we can grab all of this stuff in lower level 2. Z, B, select it all, move over here. Fine. Okay, so we've got this area is clear. Model up here, lights here. Let's go back to the model. And as a matter of fact, I'm going to move this to upper layer 2, just to get it out of the way for now. Z so that this is solid, and let's take a look. All right, so this is actually good. We're just missing some stuff. But overall, not bad. All right, so if I go to 1, Z, and then tab into edit mode. Matter of fact, control 7. Whoa. <laughs> Z, shift, middle click. You know what? Might be a good time to save. File, save. <sighs> Maybe my external hard drive is having an issue. Yeah, my external hard drive started giving me a rough time there. All right, doesn't matter. It's saved. All right, so uh, Control-7 to get into this view. Z so that we can see this as a solid. Make sure your engineering hull is selected. Tab to enter edit mode. And actually, you know what? We don't even need to see the rest of this hull. So let's go to 1. Z to make this transparent. I'm going to hit B to select. And I'm going to pick everything above our scalloped edge here. I'll leave a little to work with here. We're going to hit H to hide it. Now, control 7, Z, and we don't see vertices on the other end. We only see what's here. And here's the center of our model. This is the center row of vertices. So this vertex is at the beginning of our scalloped edge here. And we could actually do a lot of cleanup and so on, but it's not that bad. Let's take a look here. All right, control seven. Now, these are almost in a flat line, but if I pick, so this is the center line. You can even see the center red line here. I'm going to pick two verts on opposite side of this center and hit F for face. Now, what we've done is we've just made just about the world's thinnest face right there. What I, you know what? Control Z. Let's undo that. I want to pick this vert and this vert on opposite sides of the center vertex. I want to hit F for face, subdivide. Let's do this now. So now we've got, if we go 7, right, and take a look at this. Zoom right in. That subdivided vert is exactly in line with this center vert. So this is doing exactly what we want. I'm going to rotate around so we can see what we're, oh, let's go this way, Eric. There we are. I'm going to zoom in on this. All right, so we're looking at this from directly in back. A to deselect. All right, so you know what I'm going to do? We're going to take, we're going to make tries out of this one. One, two, and three. F for face. One, two, and three. F for face. And now we've got the beginning of our scalloped end. 
So take the next two adjoining. I'm sorry, actually just, yeah, right mouse click, shift, right mouse click, shift, right mouse click, shift, right mouse click, face. Let's take a look at this from the bottom. Don't worry about this. We'll apply an edge split later and, and fix it. But if you'll notice, we are starting to fill in that edge. So I want to take this vert and shift right mouse click, that vert, these two, and F for face. Okay, now it's going to get hard to keep doing this and, and, and keep moving out. So I'm going to put my cursor right on the edge here where, where my arrow changes. I'm going to split area. I'm going to split this in half from top to bottom. I've got two copies. All right, so here I'm going to go up to, see here's where we made our latest face. And then here's an extraneous vert. And there's going to be one that's right here as well on the bottom. So we know we're in the same area. So I'm going to pick this. Shift, right mouse click. Shift, right mouse click. Shift, right mouse click. F for face. Select this. And these two. Okay. I'm going to move. One down and one up. Now this is tedious. I'm going to pause this and come back when I have finished doing this for the entire back section. Once you get far enough into it and there's enough of an angle, you can actually start to see you know, these faces as you are adding them. So long as they're straight, so long as you're hitting the same geometry on both sides, you're doing this correctly. I should say that I initially considered doing this another way. I, I thought of taking the cylinder that we used to carve out this section deselecting the faces that would make uh, this section and then uh, uh, simply change them from left to right and flip the normals, uh, change their size in the uh, X, uh, I'm sorry, in the Y direction. And they would have perfectly matched this, but that's really asking for more trouble plus where we've got some odd geometry here, we could either, you know, fix this because, like on uh, on this one here, oh, come on, Eric. I could get rid of this vert here and this vert here because it really doesn't make, and maybe even this one here, because it really doesn't change the overall geometry too much. But since I want to keep this simple, I just let's match all these verts and hit a face. Yeah, doing, doing fine. Be back. Okay, just about to finish up here. We want to make sure we have matching verts all the way. If we've got more on one side than the other, then we weren't perfectly centered or some other problem. All right, face A to deselect all. I'm going to go up here where we split the screen. I'm going to right mouse click on it. And I'm going to join it. <coughs> I'm going to tab out of this. And we've made it match. All right, but of course we have some render errors here. <coughs> <coughs> Pardon me, I thought I had this licked. Sorry about that. Okay, so now we're going to make the smooth shading. We're going to go to modifier, add an edge split, and what the heck, let's apply it. Now we'll have to do some cleaning up. So, tab. Oh, 
I'm going to do uh, Alt H, A to deselect everything, A to reselect everything. And let's go to uh, remove doubles at the moment, and then mesh, normals, recalculate outside, and tab out. Uh, edge split. All right. That's not bad. That's not bad. You could use some work, but it's not bad. All right. Now, I'm going to get rid of this edge split for now. I'm going to go 1, tab, Z, deselect all. I'm going to hide the upper part of this again, B, H, control 7. But now, I want to grab all of these new, well, just the edges on these new faces. I don't need these upper edges. I'm going to B, I'm going to select all the way down to here. Oh, I'm going to pick edge selection first. B, and then get as close to here as we can without jumping right in. We're going to zoom in here, and we're going to pick everything except for the very first line. B. Shift, right mouse click, and the very first one is here. And we can see those two sets of triangles that we made. So that's fine. I don't want to bother those. What I do want to do is I want to subdivide all of those. A to deselect. We're going to zoom way in here because we didn't have anything going here. One of these faces, this face has got to go. So I'm going to delete that edge. Hang on a second. Okay, so I'm going to go to Z so we can see what we're missing here. be able to get, let's go to vertex mode, I'm going to pick this, this, and this, create a face again, <laughs> sorry, it's my cat requiring attention, alright, so, and now we've still got a couple of faces to make here, click, click, and then I'm going to want one, Two and make a face and then exactly the same on the other side one two three four face a one two Three, four, face. Okay. All right. Might take that split angle down. Nope, doesn't matter. All right, so for now, that's as good as that's going to get. If we wanted to make that smoother, I know I've got a render error here. I think I have multiple faces here. Yeah, that's why. All right, I'm going to make this easier and go to edges. So pick edge, 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 face, edge, edge, four edges, one, two, three, four, 
face. Okay, cool. A, deselect. Z, oh, I'm sorry. Z, but tab out. Yeah, no more render error. All right, nice. That's something to look for. So now we've got the scalloped out edge on the bottom. We're still going to need the flat area that corresponds to this. So if I tab out, Alt H, A to deselect all. And I have an edge that goes a little above and one that goes a little below. So, actually this one that goes a little above, if you zoom out enough, looks like it's perfectly flat with that. So we're going to start with this. I'm going to go back to vertices, Z. I'm going to B. I'm going to select these four verts, right? F for face. And we're going to keep going. So A to deselect, B to select the next four, F for face, A to deselect, B, F for face, A to deselect, B, and we keep working our way down. F for face, A to deselect, B, F for face, A to deselect, B. B, F for face, A to deselect, B, F for face, A to deselect, B, zoom in here, F for face, A to deselect, B, F for face, A to deselect. Okay, well, Z, tab. Hey, we've got that nice flat area. Cool. Now, I'm going to go here to layer two. I'm going to grab this, move it to one. Go back to one. All right, nice. Matter of fact, while we're here, let's highlight this. And I'm going to throw on the uh, hull gray. All right, and we'll smooth this out and add, of course, an edge split. Nice. Looks like the rest of the hull now. And it's perfectly in line, but it's actually overlapping with some of these other faces. So we actually don't need those. A. Let me go to one. Z. All right. So we actually don't need any of these back here. I'm going to delete those. Verts. And that leaves us with a rounded cylinder that should just about perfectly match here. Mm. Ah, I got rid of some faces. All right, so let's go to, uh, let's move this. As a matter of fact, it's still highlighted. I'm going to hit move and we're going to move it to two. Oh, I guess it wasn't highlighted. Move to two. Let's go to our second layer. And we've got a face missing here. So I'm going to tab into it. We're going to pick these four verts here. F for face. Now, I don't know that we need to do anything with this uh, back area here, but we certainly need to make the top uh, happen. So one, two, three, four, F for face. And let's do this scut work here of making the cylinder top.
Let's move that back to layer one. Go back to layer one. And now it all looks like it matches perfectly. Looks too small though. That's because it is. Hot dog. Okay, so let's grab this. I'm going to hit Z so we can see it a little easier. And we're going to scale Y. Just make it match that outer edge. Z. Hey, all right. That's exactly what we want. It's nice. It matches. The only thing left is some inner geometry here. Some of this we'll make when we put a, apply a, a thickness to the hull, but uh, not all of it. All right, so let's take a look real fast because we got to end this one today. <clears throat> we have built most of the structure for the engineering hull. Most of the geometry is there. Next time we are going to add at least the exterior for the shuttle bay, and then uh, maybe a couple of little details, and we'll move on to uh, we will move on to the warp pylons. All right, thank you very much. Great job, everybody. Oh, don't forget file save, and if you haven't, uh, like and subscribe. Okay, thank you very much. Bye. See you next time.